Good morning. Good morning. I think most of the church is still in the narthex. <laughs> oh, we could lure people in with coffee maybe and donuts in the sanctuary. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. A blessed Advent to you. We are just on the second week of Advent. And about an hour ago, our Sunday school kids today, Lydia and Hannah and Tadashi and parents were helping us make Advent wreaths. You'll see that next week. But we do have the big one up there. And you guys get to help me light those candles in a little bit too. Of course, in this season of Advent, we pray that Jesus comes to disrupt us with a holy disruption. And today our theme, if you will, is release. Last week, if you were here, do you remember what we were talking about? Breathing, how the very spirit of God gives life to all and also promises life after with a wholly different sort of breath. But today we recognize that we often hold on to, and I, this is our symbol for holding on to, a tight fist. We hold on to many things that distract us and that perhaps keep us from recognizing the advent of Jesus Christ. And so we'll hear a little bit how to do an exercise of release, and that we'll get to a little bit later. So throughout the remaining weeks of Advent, we have a, a kind of a theology that we hear about Advent, and then we also have a spiritual practice that accompanies that. So last week was breathing, and this week, release. We hold in our prayers all who are near and dear to us. We especially remember Alida Chasik, her brother Mark passed away yesterday. And as I understand, Mark, uh, Walt, you were able to be with the family. So we keep Alida and you and Mark's family and all of the family and friends in our prayers and trust in Jesus' resurrection. So we pray for you. I invite us to stand as we're ready. We begin with the greeting on page three. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ that guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Make way for holy disruption. Humanity releases that which misdirects us. All right, you may be seated. And then that the children and any of the parents want to come forward. Do you guys remember how many Advent candles we're lighting today? It's more than one. Two. We're lighting two blue candles. So come on up here. I'm going to stand behind here. It gives you guys a little bit more room. If you want to splash in the water, you certainly can do that too. Come on up. If you guys stand right about here. OK, I'm going to light this candle. Should we light this one, do you think? OK. Tadashi, do you want to hang on? Lydia, do you want to hang on? All right. Nice and high, here we go. Yep. Which other candle should we light? That's the first candle, the breath of God. Should we do that front one? Okay. Ready? Ooh. There we go. And that one is for releasing. Releasing and taking in the breath and the gift of God. Thank you, Tadashi. Do you want to give that to Papa? Excellent. Thank you all for helping. And you know what? I'll, if I, I can take that and put that back. And at the end of worship, Tadash, you can help me put those out. We'll stand and sing our Advent hymn. We sing in the red hymnal number 252 each winter as the year grows older. And we're singing verses 1, 2, and 5 this week. 1, 2, and 5. Each 
God of freedom, there are so many other things that we cling to and that demand our focus. We fear the disruption of change and hold fast to the very things that weigh us down. Yet your promise assures us that we find all we need in you. Be with us and all your people. Guide us so that we may set aside all that distracts us from you. In the name of the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Amen. You may be seated for some time of silence. We continue with the reading. One of Israel's wisest kings, King Solomon, is credited with writing the book of Proverbs. True wisdom is gleaned from trusting God rather than trusting in human wisdom, which may often be misguided or self-serving. Proverbs chapter 3. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 146, verses 5 through 10. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. 
The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. The gospel is from the third chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when Isaiah said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now, John the Baptist wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to John in all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by John the Baptist in the river, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourself, well, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I that is coming after me, and I'm not worthy to carry his sandals, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Hi, Hannah. It looks like a good cookie down there. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. God's people say, Amen. Many years ago, standing on a busy downtown Minneapolis corner was a man shouting and holding a sign, much like with what we heard today, repent, the end is near. I rushed past the man, as many of us did on that street corner, trying not to look into his eyes. And he looked as haggard as his voice sounded. Some like him holler from streets, some holler like he did on television and radio stations. Some holler from books. Some pound and shout from pulpits. And I'm not really comfortable with any who shout judgment and condemnation. But then there's John the Baptist, who seems to do this very thing, who seems to be shouting in this shouting category of people. And yet, and yet, John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, is credible, albeit eccentric and loud. Repent from the wilderness, he hollered. The kingdom of heaven is near. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Therefore, any tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and will be thrown into the fire. Well, it creates a little anxiety, doesn't it? <laughs> For sure, John wasn't a Sunday school teacher. I will say that. Hopefully, hopefully. We don't hear from his children, so who knows? But he was a prophet who did attract many, many people, even with this ancient, ancient and um, anxious message. And sometimes it takes a fiery, judgy message to get through to us, 
Because as I was saying in the beginning of our worship service, sometimes we hold on to an awful lot very tightly. And for whatever reason, it's hard to hear a message contrary to that which we hold tightly. Sometimes we hold tightly to our own wisdom. As Ellen was reading from Proverbs, not that our own wisdom isn't bad, but it isn't God's wisdom. Prepare, the prophet shouts, now, prepare now, because the Lord is near. And indeed, that message is as true as our faith contends. Who wouldn't prepare today for the Lord's return? Isn't that why you come to church, too? is to know that we are here to worship God who doesn't need really our worship but invites us to worship so that we may be fed and nourished and sent out into the world as ministers of people of God to share the love of God with others. So who wouldn't prepare for Jesus coming? Even in our Sunday school time with the kids this morning as we were making our Advent wreaths, we talked about preparing for God who is always... Emmanuel, what does that mean? God with us. It's a joyful message. But the next part of John's message is equally important. The reason to prepare today for the Lord's return isn't because Jesus is coming to really bring fiery judgment, saving the worthy people while casting others into what we might say eternal damnation or hell, even though that's how often this passage and passages like it are interpreted, as though there's a winning team of people and the dregs of humanity losing team of people. Let's consider Jesus from the cross. With a thief on each side of him, and all of humanity around him, including us today, taunting Jesus, doubting, not really sure, mocking him, some crying for him, but from the cross, Jesus asked God in heaven to forgive all of us because we didn't recognize just how far God would go to save and to be with and to love each of us. Even to death, God was willing to go. And Jesus graciously invited those thieves to be with him that day in paradise. No judgment, none, no scorn, no separation from God, Emmanuel, God with us, even suffering death, even suffering betrayal and denial, and despair himself. Right, Hannah? Jesus gives abundant life and dwells with us, offering us abundant life. That is the wisdom of God. And like that ax that's ready to cut away a dead tree, John the Baptist reminds us that the proverbial axe is at the root of our lives, ready to cut away that which is already dead, ready to cut away habits and actions that we hold on to like that tight fist that rob us or others of life. I'd like the season of Advent with these fiery, judgy um, readings to take on maybe a new slogan. Today is a good day for pruning. So that we can make room for Jesus to grow new life in us and through us. So that we can release that which we hold on to that distracts us to make room for holy disruption so that we can give life to others in Christ to bring kindness and cut away injustice and take actions of hope and life. Today is a good day for pruning. So when Jesus comes near, we are ready. John's message is wild. And I think it's just wild so that it gets our attention for one thing. It is supposed to make us feel anxious and motivate us. But can we blame him? 
when he fully believes that this one, Jesus, God's chosen one, is coming to dwell with us and save humanity from ourselves. That message is urgent. John gets it right. Even King Solomon, who is accredited to writing the Proverbs message over a thousand years before Jesus was even born, says much the same. Let go of the things that rob you of life. True wisdom is this, that God has first given us commandments as a gift that when followed, bless and prosper life. Not meant to save us, but bless relationships and wellness and wholeness and bless communities, whether faith communities or communities that we live in and nations. So we trust in God always, and we release our personal securities and distractions to make room for Jesus. Last week, we took some time to inhale. We put our feet flat on the floor, whatever is most comfortable. And we inhaled and we held our breath, recognizing that that breath that we breathe is a gift from God that from Adam, Adam meaning dirt, and Adama from the earth, gives us life in our spirit and animates the entire world. We breathe that in, aware of that, and breathe out. And we are in relationship with God. Let's try that. Breathe in. We hold and breathe out. And we breathe in and we breathe out. When we breathe together, we are such a close community of God, breathing in the very spirit of God. Now we're gonna add something, okay? You can remain seated, but hold one or two fists as tight as you can. This is that which we hold on to that distracts us from God. And whatever you think that might be, just put it, imagine it in your fist. And when we inhale, we're going to keep our fists locked and when we exhale, we are going to release. Inhale. And exhale. And tighten your fists and inhale. And release. That rhythm is the rhythm of faith of Jesus coming to us again and again. It's a simple spiritual practice that we often might think of, oh, those are reserved for Lent. But no, these are reserved for every day of our life because Jesus is always coming with us and cutting away that which distracts us, helping us to release. Today is a good day for pruning where Jesus cuts away that which robs us of life and gives abundant life through God's spirit. Today is a good day for pruning because Jesus is always coming. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, and the prayers for the season of Advent are a little bit different, where we will have a sung verse, which is printed on page five of your bulletin, and you'll, you'll hear um, today, Ellen will say, Savior, we wait for you, hear us pray. That's our cue to sing again the song phrase or verse. We pray, wait one second. Christ's coming among us today. God, disrupt the church where it grows complacent and where it is slow to respond to the needs of your people. Inspire congregations into bold actions of faith. 
God, disrupt humanity from harming the earth. Teach us to be good stewards of land, water, and air. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. Savior, we wait for you. Hear us as we pray. Disrupt systems that benefit some and oppress others. Raise up leaders to govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, disrupt the actions of those who harm others. Come to the aid of any who are exploited and abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Protect anyone without shelter, accompany refuge, refugees, and those fleeing violence. Savior, we wait for you. Hear us as we pray. tendencies to trust in human wisdom alone. Strengthen us to release that which robs us of the abundant life you give. Breathe wisdom into our lives that we serve you and our neighbors joyfully. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, and those nearing death. Comfort all in need. Redeemer Lord, we pray for the wellness of this congregation. Enrich us through the holy currency of truth. Deepen our relationships, stir up our leadership, and bless our financial offerings for the sake of your gospel in this time and place. Savior, we wait for you. Hear us as we pray. What else does this faith community pray for today? Lord, comfort all who for this time of year is difficult for those who are lonely for those who have hard memories at this time of year, for those missing loved ones. Be with Alita and family as they mourn the loss of Mark, and we trust into your hands, all for whom we pray, trusting in your resurrection, comfort, and peace, and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. The spirit of peace is with you. Let's take some time to share a sign of peace with each other, God's peace. Unless something has changed, we have one extra ticket to go see the Black Nativity, in which one, we have three tickets, we have three tickets now to go see the Black Nativity, and one of Hephatha's youth will actually be in the production, and that's next Saturday at two. So if you are able, can you please see Margaret Shaywe? And you all know Margaret, I don't think, yes. So three tickets. It's a great production. Um, I saw it a few years ago. I hope that if you are free next Saturday, you might consider that. On the very back page of your worship bulletin, there's a gracious invitation for the entire congregation, which of course, not everybody is here today. But we are, and I am very excited to be working with the Kaleidoscope Institute. Several of us many years ago, about 12 years ago, were begun to be trained through Eric Law of the Kaleidoscope Institute. 
the new director, Julie Boleyn, has, has taken up that role and has put together for us, and we're gonna, if there's a visual message that you can see out in the narthex, so you can see Julie, but we're gonna play the um, audio, I'm stalling for John right now, so, <laughs> so that we can hear this invitation. You can also read about it, but it is something on wellness that I am greatly and deeply excited to, um, to begin these conversations in a month. So with that, John, whenever Hello. you're ready. My name is Pastor Julie Boleyn, and I'm the executive director for the Kaleidoscope Institute and also a Lutheran pastor. It has actually been a tremendous pleasure to work with your Stewardship 365 team to imagine this initiative that we're calling Conversations on Being Well. This is an invitation and an opportunity for your whole congregation to join together to foster wellness and hope as together you listen for how God is calling you now. When we talk about wellness at the Kaleidoscope Institute, we're talking about all of those things, all of them that make for this shared sense of health and wholeness. You may remember the story of the Israelites in the wilderness. God had freed the people as they fled slavery in Egypt, and the journey was long and hard. The people were hungry, and they were complaining that at least in Egypt they had some food. And so God listened to the people and sent manna, this strange substance that tasted of honey and fell from the sky each morning but for the Sabbath. It was a blessing that seemed to come from nowhere, a blessing that had to be noticed and it had to be shared. Because if they hoarded this blessing, it became gross and sickening and it would make a whole community unwell. We are unwell when we are hungry in the wilderness and we are unwell when we hoard things, when our blessings are not shared. During these conversations on being well, we will listen for how God is nurturing our wellness and calling us to attend to those things in our lives and in our communities that are deeply unwell. I am so excited for you to take on this endeavor because together you're going to be considering wellness in terms of Sabbath, truth seeking, tending to our relationships with one another and with God, looking at how we relate to money and how we raise up new leaders. All of this, every bit of it, for the purpose of building a life-giving, truth-telling, relationship-building community. So here's how this will work. Beginning the week of January 8th, small groups will gather each week for one hour for a five-week series of reflective conversations focusing on the impact of wellness in our lives. The Stewardship 365 team will let you know the logistics of how to sign up for these. But the conversations will be interactive with opportunities for deep listening and sharing. You do not need to meet any kind of expert at all. I get to be there with you for the kickoff event on set Sunday, January 8th, following worship. The small groups will meet between January 8th and February 11th. I have a team of Kingo facilitators to lead these groups through those five weeks, and you'll be able to join a group that works best for your schedule and it can be online or in person. And this whole series then will conclude with a visit to a local mission site where you'll get the opportunity to witness how the currency of wellness and more are creating a cycle of blessings for the greater Milwaukee area. You can sign up for this at the Kingo website, kingo.org. So it's important to know that through this five-week series, we will engage in weekly gatherings, either on in person or on Zoom, and we'll get and expand our understanding of wellness by sharing in the scripture in small groups. We'll notice and wonder 
about how the Holy Spirit is constantly nudging us into wellness. We will honor the time commitments. It's one hour a week for five weeks, but it'll be an opportunity to make space for relationship, to develop, to, to develop a common language for ministry, and to take a break from all the non-essential meetings, the sense of Sabbath, to take time for wellness. And then you'll end up wrapping it up with a trip to a local organization to experience wellness in your larger community. And during these five weeks, we will not gather for a boring Bible study or ask for more than an hour beyond Sunday worship. There will be no judgment or shame. There will be no experts. It's not a lecture, but rather an interactive serve series from which we learn from the wisdom of the gathered. And we will not exceed this five-week commitment. I thank you for taking this risk and leaning into the opportunity that this provides. I want to invite you to remember the words of Jesus as told in John 15. I have loved you, even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Thank you. You'll be hearing more about the invitation to sign up for these five weeks beginning in about a month. And I look forward to these holy conversations on being well with all of you. So stay tuned on your email uh, news that comes on Wednesdays and Thursdays, right, Hannah? And this will be a great conversation for the entire congregation to have together. Every voice is important. Do you want those back? I thought so. Mm-hmm. You want me to keep the pink one? Oh, the pink's the best one. Okay. <laughs> Well, I invite us to, um, you could read the rest of the announcements on your own. There also, again, will be a video where you can see Julie Boleyn in the narthex with the same message. And she will be with us in person too, so we get to meet her. Please stand for the benediction. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen.